So I just want to give a quick little intro, guys. This is my 1993 Subaru Sambar. It's a Japanese K truck, and K is a class of vehicle in Japan for a different uh, registration rate where it's 660 cubic centimeters or less engine size. There's a maximum weight, and uh, they're small, really small. If you could put it in comparison with this 1947 Chrysler, you can see just how small it is. Um, you know, I bought this truck hoping that I could do work around the property in really tight spaces, and it absolutely can. It's, it's done nothing but impress me. It's a proper truck. It has heat. It has uh, five speeds, wipers, nice lights, blinkers. Um, it goes down the road like a normal vehicle because it is a normal vehicle. It's just small. Um, Subarus are interesting because it's a four-cylinder instead of a three-cylinder like a lot of K trucks. So it gives a lot of low-end torque compared to those three-cylinders. It doesn't rev nearly as high as the three-cylinders do. I think those are like 12,000 RPM red lines. This one's like seven, like a normal four-cylinder car. So it's definitely a slightly unique design amongst the K trucks. I'm going to assemble some clips of me using it, and the reality is it's been great for what I need it to do. So yeah, they can do work. Well, we just did 50 some odd miles, I think it was, with the bike in the back. Really? It drives exactly the same. It doesn't feel any faster or slower or bumpier or softer. It just feels like the exact same truck. You can still cruise at uh, 65 on flat ground on the highway. You know, hills were always downshifting situations anyway. And they still are. But it doesn't feel at all incapable. So, great little tow pig, I guess. Like, just fits. Perfect. All right. We're about to do the Pittsburgh run. 170, 180 miles with the bike in the back. Should be pretty great. Okay, bike in the back, mini truck, Pittsburgh, here we come. So to prep for the trip, the mini truck got a new rocker cover, gasket, and fresh valve adjustment. They were almost perfect. I tightened three valves, like barely, like half of a thousandth of an inch, they were barely off. So, we'll see if the little Subaru today has what it takes to get over the White Mountains. We're just gonna do Franconia Notch Interstate 93, it's the least steep of all the notches to get through. Even though it's the interstate, um, right at the beginning of the notch, the speed limit drops to 55 and then it's 45 in the notch. So, shouldn't make too many people too angry. And get right over the mountains, no problem. Getting to the mountains, we're gonna go the back route up the spine of New Hampshire, so Lakes region, uh, hit up Meredith area, turn left, um, and cross over to Ashland where we'll hit Route 3. And depending on my mood, we'll either stay on Route 3 or we'll get on 93 in Ashland. Because that can save us at least, I don't know, 15 minutes if you take the highway instead of Route 3 despite going slow. Um, not a lot of miles different at all, but it winds back and forth under the highway. So the other thing I need to do is make note. It says I have a full tank. Um, 
So I'm at 83,892 kilometers. Let's see what we get to by the time we get there. I have no idea what the fuel mileage is in this truck. Especially loaded. And it's loaded not at capacity, but kind of near it. 500 pound bike at least. I got all my junk. Maybe another 100 pounds plus myself. 170 pounds. So, we'll see how she does. foot canoe tiny little truck but we should be able to fit through the woods hopefully it won't break in half it's a pretty 
I guess you'd call that redneck engineering job to get it in there. But I gotta go down through a pretty tiny trail. So we'll see. So the drive begins with 16 feet of canoe hanging out back. And we'll see if we can't get down to the uh, pond. Stay tuned. Drove in the mud. It's still there. Put the old Subaru in extra low. Good news is this isn't sopping wet like I was worried it might be. We've had just so much rain this summer. Looks like we're gonna make it through. So over there is where it starts to get wet. We're running parallel right now to a, it's gotta be 40 acres or so, 40 acre pond. And where my property line starts is right where the good water starts as well. Or I should say where my property line stops is where the good water starts. So we'll take this old road. They did both logging and maple syruping on with the canoe to get down to the end here. and. That's where the canoe will live, so we have good access to water and not just marsh. So the road being in such proximity to the pond, you know, it's a low spot, it gets wet, but it's it's not wetland, this area. It's just very, very close to wetland. Yeah, the, mud's, the mud's not even that bad, so that's great. Coming up to a nice high spot here. And does the canoe still live? It does. Canoe lives on. And see how we're getting closer to the more open part of the pond. exactly why I bought the Subaru. Uh, I bought this little K truck specifically to fit in these small spaces. It's quiet, but it's also fully road legal, unlike, you know, a side-by-side, -side, which is not only loud and annoying, but not, not legal for the road. So this I can take down down to the hardware store. Side-by-side, -side, not so much. Now, granted, there are there are places where the side-by-side -side is much more capable. Like, for example, I can take the side-by-side -side right there through that little divot. And this really doesn't do it justice, but it's actually quite a quite an angle, like so, down towards the pond. The little truck just doesn't have the, uh, there's a dip 
right there. It doesn't have the articulation for that without a lift kit or anything. So we're gonna have to stop here and tote the canoe over to there. That little clearing is where we get good water. But anyway, it uh, it made it. 16 foot of canoe in the back of a maybe six foot bed. Good stuff. So here's an outside angle. That's the road we just came up. Pond all over there. And I just backed the truck into that little section that I was telling you guys about where I can't get through just because I don't have the articulation. You can kind of see it. Not really. But see, this is high right here, and that's low right there. Let's see if I can capture that somehow. Eh. You gotta remember, it's a very small truck. And I just have these summer tires on here because they were affordable. Got them brand new, all four tires. I want to say $150. Anyway, let's tote her out down the path over there. Well, I didn't film that because I had to drag it since I was alone. But there's the truck over there. And behind me here, we have the canoe. So there's a little beaver slide right here. And the end of my property is right there, that stone wall. And luckily the beaver slide gives us access here to decent water. It's marshy all right, but as you can see, it's, it's wet enough that we'll be able to scoot right over the top of those weeds and down the end has a, a big open area, probably 15 acres of open water. But this pond, marsh, whatever you want to call it, extends all the way to my house down there. All the way along that road and up for quite a long ways. You get some beautiful sunsets. Is that straight west over there?
back up top. So there you go guys, the little truck was perfect for getting the canoe down. And we definitely gave her a little bit of mud. Nothing crazy, not spinning the tires like Looney Tunes or anything. But Subaru Sandbar, done it again. So yeah, the Subaru is incredibly useful. Um, it did everything I asked it to all summer. And we are now uh, in December, and I'm not sure if I'm going to drive it um, in the salt. The thing is, I could undercoat it. It's completely rust-free. They don't rust over in Japan. And it's just so nice, even with undercoating, I'm not really sure I want to take it on the salty roads. So there's a good chance it's going to be put in storage in the basement. But um, you know, I'll probably use it on the property around the snow just for fun, but I don't want to take it on the roads. But uh, Subaru K-Truck, would I get one again? Absolutely. So thanks for watching and glad to have you. See you next time.